Hi, boys and girls. I was brainwashed out of Christianity in a very crafty way by some organizations who control the world and information and schooling and governments. I was brainwashed away from the sweetness of the spirit of loving kindness and my invisible friend, my lifeguard, I was brainwashed away from Christianity because it had been so owned and saturated by this stuff. No one, I am just learning right now. I'm beginning to learn. This is a video called, Who are the Real Forces Behind New World Order, Centuries of Organized Deception, Revolutions, Tyrants? And the YouTube channel is Amazing Discoveries. And this guy is a Seventh-day Adventist researcher, and these people are really good at research. Now, in the Apostolic Constitutions, I discovered that the great honorable respect for the Saturday Sabbath, the Seventh-day Sabbath, and for a thing called the Eighth Day, which is Resurrection Day, and the resurrection on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Those two days, Saturday and Sunday, were both respected by the early disciples. And there's a lot of information on that. And people love to get divided about opinions and create factions. So I don't agree with the Seventh-day Adventist faction. But I do declare that a person can celebrate the first day of the week, Sunday, as Resurrection Day... And they can also have a great respect for the law of Moses, which has in it the Saturday Sabbath. Yeshua says, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. So he can actually direct whatever he wants to do on the Sabbath day. So anyhow, this is a wild thing. This is the, this is the way that I was tricked out of connection with Christianity. Hang in there, grab a pen, take notes. This is pretty wild. They were in the beginning. With their systems, their central authorities, and diverse modes of correspondence between high grades of the same right, organized as they are. This is 1870. It's talking about the Masonic rites and creating a super right that is going to govern everything and is going to be an international center, but its its direction, its directorship is going to be unknown and hidden. Or at present, but we must create a super right, which will remain unknown, to which we will call those masons of high degree, whom we shall select. With regard to our brothers in masonry, these men must be pledged to the strictest secrecy, through this supreme right, we will govern all Freemasonry, which will become the one international center, the more powerful, because its direction will be unknown. New World Order. Now, Albert Pike wrote a letter to Mancini, and that was dated August 15, 1871, in which he propagated that there should be a world order, a one order where all nations are under the control of one central organization. And in order to achieve this, they plan the First World War to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia, protector of orthodoxy, and bring about an atheistic communistic state. Did that happen? The Second World War, that's also written long before the event, to originate between Great Britain and Germany to strengthen communism as, as antithesis to the Judea Christian culture, and bring about a Zionist state in Israel. Did it achieve this objective? Yes. In fact, after this war, Israel, in its present form, was reinstated under the protection of Britain. And then, interestingly enough, a third world war, a Middle Eastern war involving, involving Judaism and Islam. So in this work, bringing about the one world order, this letter was on display in the British Museum. The plan, this is quoted from Satan, Prince of This World, 
and also from Secrets of the Illuminati by Doc Marquis. Now, so this work of deceiving the world and to create a communism that seems better than the Judeo-Christian way of doing things, this was a part of how I got brainwashed. All of this stuff, an atheistic communist state that people should be invited to, this is all psychological work. And these two world wars were planned and put in place. And when you start to learn about the concentration camps as slave labor camps, the people in Germany who spoke against the German government, they would just disappear and be put in the slave labor camps. The Jews would be exterminated and all of their stuff was removed. But the people who spoke against the government would be turned into slave laborers in the enormous concentration camp system. And that was what was keeping the German war machine going was those people who were truth speakers and who stood up and said no.